Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again. It's Wednesday, midweek Wednesday. Hope you're having a great week so far. Uh, we got a few things to do today. It's uh, We're having a bit of a heat spell here in the city. It's going to be uh, above 90, about 94 for the next couple days. And, and it only gets down to like mid 80s at night. So it's just, it's kind of, it wears on you after a while. I'm not a big fan of the heat. So, um, uh, you know, when I get up in the morning, I have some breakfast. I watch a little TV in the air conditioning. Love that air conditioning, right? So watch a little TV and you're always on Jaws, the original Jaws. And I was watching that and I was saying, boy, this movie, it just gets better with time. It's such a great movie. I don't know if you're, uh, you know, if this is for some of you old timers out there, you remember when Jaws came out. I was about 13 years old when it came out in the movies. It came out late june i think it was june 20th that opened up and uh just in time for the summer season 1975 and uh i remember when we were, we saw it oh man was that scary uh, you know i don't know if you remember how many people that affected as far as not going in the water even if you even if you weren't somebody that did a lot of uh going into the ocean or whatnot but here we have ocean, you know, next to us on the East Coast. I'm sure you do too on the uh, West Coast or whatever. But when you went into the ocean, you kept thinking about, you know, that, remember that music, that Jaws music? And, you know, you'd be sitting there. If something bumped up on your leg when you were in the water, <laughs> back in the late 70s, that movie had a big effect. It kept a lot of people out of the water for a long time. An amazing movie. And I was watching it today and I was thinking... Man, that was 75. That was 45 years ago. That was such a long time. When you think about, uh, you look at the hairstyles and the, the bathing suits and the, you know, the color saturation in that movie was so great. And uh, just a great movie. If you get a chance to revisit it and uh, just look at some of the scenery and the surrounding things and, and the way people dressed and behaved. And, you know, like they had one scene where the, the mayor was smoking in the hospital. It's like, remember, years ago, you could smoke in a hospital, you know? I mean, think, you, you look back at things, you say, wow, how could they even let that happen back then? But they, you know, a lot of things changed back then. So it was an interesting movie. Had a good time watching that today. So, but uh, we wanted to start, we got a few things to get to today. So let's get started right away. Now, we're in the middle of doing our electric motor series, and uh, I thought this would be a good time to, to pull out this. This is a, a new old stock, Leeson. Leeson is a, a motor manufacturer out of Grafton, Wisconsin. And uh, this is a, a Leeson farm duty motor I picked up on eBay a while ago, and I got a good deal on it. I think I paid like 100 bucks for it. And uh, I thought this would be a great time. A lot of you have never seen a new motor and what to do with a new motor if you want to you know do restorations or whatnot let's get right into it let me show you the pros and cons of getting a new motor now inside the box uh you'll see the motor is attached to a small piece of wood wrapped in some uh some plastic here so we'll get through this this is what it looks like you know it's always nice to get a, a new motor you know, something that's not filled with dust and dirt and grime. So let's take this apart. Okay, now in our uh, farm duty motor here. Now what a farm duty motor is, it's a little bit different. You have standard duty, you have heavy duty, industrial, farm duty. It's all just different uh, variations of a, a standard motor that they add extra protection and whatnot. Farm duty just means it's, it's totally sealed. And uh, it's, you can see here, it says T-E-F-C, totally enclosed fan cooled, okay? And what that means is uh, this here has, it's sealed here. You can see it's sealed here. It's also sealed in the back, but there's a fan on the outside that blows air across the housing because, you know, heat is a big problem with electric motors. So the reason you want a fan uh, a totally enclosed motor is you don't want dirt you know they use this for agricultural where you have a lot of that dust and grain and things like that so you'll see these a lot on the farm and stuff also they're usually meant for continuous duty and things like that so here's your little wiring diagram but i also have the instructions that came with it but uh it shows you the wiring diagram for it runs either 220 or 115 volts so we'll get to it first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take apart the box here. Okay, so now this has a gasket in here and you could see now, you could see here, 
you could see here from this uh, oxidation that this probably wasn't stored in a climate control uh, warehouse. Also, if you look on the shaft here, you could see there's just a little bit of here. You could see a little bit of just tiny surface rust. So, you know, when you buy new old stock, that's what you deal with. But when you pull these out here, this is your your manual your manual thermal reset button. And uh, what you want to do is you want to pull these wires out and uh, and open them up here. And then you're going to look at what you have here. Each wire is labeled and uh, we're going to have to go through and figure out how to hook these up with the wiring diagram. But you can see here we have um, they're all one color, but they do have letters on it. And you see some are already twisted together. Now, there's two ways that this could spin. It could spin clockwise like this or counterclockwise we like counterclockwise in the shop because we want things to turn down now i believe this comes clockwise from the factory so we're going to have to reverse two leads in order to get this to turn the way we want counterclockwise now all of these lines are marked like for example you see this one here that says p1 that's your power line coming in now I'll show you what this looks like. Uh, and like I said, it's very simple. Each one is marked. This one here is T5. This one here is T4. You can see, so don't, don't be confused and say, uh oh, what about it? So long as you look at here, and remember for 115 volts, you're gonna look over here. If you were working 208 to 230 volts, you would look over here. So just be worried about this side here. Now, ideally, I would like to have a switch mounted on this box. This, I don't want this to be too cluttered in here, but we got to have a knockout here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a punch like this, put it on the knockout, and just tap it with a hammer here. And you can see that that is called a knockout punch, and this will come right out. It's just like that, you see? Now, this is called a nylon cable gland. Like if you had swollen glands, that's what these are called. Now, what you would do here is, I like the nylon, try and get nylon rather than plastic. They're just a little bit heavier duty. They also make metal ones, but uh, they clamp on it in a different way. So you screw this off here. This is half inch. That'll fit into this one here. And then you put this nut on this side and feed your cable through, through this way. Now, the beauty of these glands is if you take this off here, you could see that this will act, you see that there, as you tighten this down, this will squeeze and act and clamp around the cable acting as a strain relief. So that's why this is made the way it now, is. Now, before you do any tightening of your, your gland, there's a screw in the back. This is your ground screw and you can see it's green. So I like to take a wireless, uh, uh, a solderless uh, connector here and uh, crimp it on. We're gonna crimp it on to this uh, ground wire and then loop that around and pass it through the screw so it can't come loose. Okay, you see how you ground this connected there? Now we're just going to make these other two connections to now, these. Now, what I like to do whenever you have a, a bunch of wires going into a single wire nut or whatever, I like to take a small, the one of very small zip ties and zip tie them together, okay, like this, so that everything's nice and tight. And then we'll go around with tape. Now, my buddy John Sokrin Sr., shout out to his son, uh, sent over a bunch of these uh, 3M Temflex. I never tried this. This I've been dying to try this. This is a high heat um general use but it's you can see it's a high heat vinyl electrical tape and he's been using this stuff for years and he says it's great so looking forward to trying this special thanks to john for that now when you have everything it it's a lot easier to look at now now you got to tuck all your wires in you want to keep them you know from tangling up too much just bend them in lightly like this push them away and then this is when you tighten your gland up now you see we put a piece of heat shrink tubing over here just as an added protection but you pull it out just a little bit here then you'll tighten this up and when you tighten this up this will lock down on here and you won't be able to move it so we'll tighten all these nuts up holding this one here and you can see now that's a solid connection okay it's test time if you notice here, the price in this, my buddy James from Time Flies in the Shop, he hooked me up. He said, hey, John, is a Habitat for Humanity over here is selling these cords. I know how you like these heavy-duty cords and uh, heavy-gauge cords for a dollar a piece. So, obviously, 
James hooked me up. I said, oh, James, send me a bunch. And he did. So, James, thanks so much for that. And let me show you here. Let's plug it in. Okay, see how it runs. Okay. Now, remember, there's a fan on this side, but it's totally enclosed, and it's blowing air across the case of the motor so it don't get too hot. Let me demonstrate this here. If you look here, you see the, see the air coming across here? And that comes all the way back you see that there's air coming out of these slots here all the way around the motor you can see it better over here see that so that's how this keeps cool now this has a 5 8 inch shaft how do we use it for somebody like us like how would we use it let me show you I'm gonna shut it off listen for the uh, centrifugal switch there we go not quite the wind down of my other ones, but again, these sometimes have to break in for a while. Now, you see here, this one here is a key, what they call a keyed shaft, and that's because some of the pulleys that would go on there would have a key, a keyway, a cutout, and that's what, that stops it from spinning on here. Uh, with this one here, we take the key out. If it don't come out like this, that's where you use your little hammer and you tap it out. There's your key. Okay, now we don't use a key, but we would rather have a flat spot on there. And uh, we use what's called an arbor adapter. Let me just clean this up real quick with a little scotch Okay, break. to adapt this motor to what we want to use, whether it be a buffer, a fiber wheel, or a wire wheel, whatever you want, we use what's called an arbor adapter. Now, you have to get the shaft size. This one is 5 8 of an inch shaft. This is a 5 8 inch arbor adapter. Now, you can see here, this model here is a Klesko. It's You try and look for the highest quality one you can get. Don't don't buy the cheapest one on these because it's only a couple dollars difference. This is, I think, $13. But uh, it makes a big difference when you get one that's made quality-wise. This is a half-inch threaded shaft that comes out of here. You can see here, this is normal threading on the side. If you were going to use it on a double shaft motor and you were going on the other side, they do make a left-handed thread for that side. But for this side here, counterclockwise, we want standard threading on this side. So you can see here, it's got two hex nuts here and you just go in between those that slot right there slide this on until it bottoms out and then just tighten it down with your bondus if you can use bondus use it uh tighten this down and you'll see that just make sure it goes in between that shaft there tighten it down and uh bob's your uncle here we go now that's all you need no spin and then you just want to check it for trueness once you uh put something in there go we'll plug it in you see how nice and true that's spinning that's just what you want you're in now that's all you need now the nice thing about this i could feel this wind blowing over here this is great if you're using especially like a fiber wheel or something because it's going to blow all the dust away from you and not getting into your lungs like uh most of us old timers have so there we go okay next up let's say you have a motor and you have your box, but you want to put a switch in so that you can use it at the bench and be able to switch it on and off right there. I'm going to show you how to do that now. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you got to get yourself a good quality toggle switch that's rated for the amperage of your motor. This particular motor, because it's a, a farm duty, it does draw 8 amps uh, at running, you know, just under 8 amps. So you want to have a switch that's rated for at least 10 amps, you know, minimum. And uh, here we have... Uh, uh, heavy duty toggle switch if you look at the ratings on here this one's rated for 20 amps at 125 voltage a ac which is what this is uh or a three-quarter horsepower motor you could see and so we're going to put this one in i'm going to show you how we do it and uh first thing we're going to have to do is figure out where we want to put it now ideally it'd be nice to put it right here but we have the thermal switch underneath here so that's blocked underneath so we figure we have enough room right here now you have to remember the body of the switch the size of the switch, you always got to make sure you have enough room. This has about a half. So if we put this in here like this, you have to make sure that hole isn't too close to the edge. But we could put that hole right here between these two knockouts. You don't want to put them in the knockout because it's not that strong and they will pop. You know, So you right about here is a good spot. And we're going to drill a hole to this size here. First thing we're going to do is going to mark where we're going to drill right there. 
we want to put a plate under here so that we make sure now this is covering all the wires but we don't want any chips to go in there anyway we'll vacuum all that out anyway but this here this steel cover plate makes a good little plate to make sure that no chips or anything can go in there now we'll drill through that to the right size hole now the steel enclosure is harder than it looks so start with smaller drills work your way up and a step drill is the best way to get the proper size hole for this switch using a step drill. Now what we have, we're going to put leads or tails onto the switch and we're gonna use solderless connectors. We're gonna crimp a couple onto some three inch leads and, uh, and then we're gonna attach them tightly to the switch. We will tape that up later on, but now all we're gonna do is take the switch and put it in line. What we're taking up here, you see that wire nut? We're gonna disconnect, that's the P1 line, that's power going to the motor. So we're going to take that wire nut off and just put the switch right in between that circuit right there. We're going to connect one line to each wire. Now that you have it connected, you can see we have everything all taped up here. And uh, now you can see you could fit that in nicely. Now, if you look at a toggle switch, it has a barrel on there with two nuts. One is a hex nut and one is a knurled nut. Now that gets sandwiched between the enclosure that you're going to put it in. Now it's very important, the reason that that moves up and down is so that you don't have too much of this barrel sticking above the enclosure. Now you can see we, uh, to tighten it, we put a pair of needle nose on the back nut and use a pair of channel locks and just gently without messing up the knurling tight. It's gotta be tight, it can't be spinning in that hole. Once everything is nice and tight and you're satisfied, gently, Bend these uh, leads into the box without any kinks. You want everything to be curled when it goes in there and tuck them in nicely and a nice and neat enclosure and then put the cover on, making sure there's no kinks or sharp bends in any of the wires. Okay, here we are. The switch is installed. Now again, like I said, it has to be tight. You don't want this to spin around. That's why it's gotta be tight around here. It's not overly uh, sticking out of the case. Everything is buttoned up. Let's try it out. Beautiful, huh? Nothing like having a switch on right here when you're doing work right there. So, And uh, they do have dust boots if you want to put it on. But like I said, there's a fan blowing this way. You'll never have that problem with this particular type motor. Okay, so in closing, that was a, a lot of fun today. And really enjoyed this project. Uh, everything came out just the way I was hoping. Um... I know that uh, I, I wanted to do the base for that sweet hammer we did, but, you know, sitting here on that lathe, you know, that lathe gets hot when you're down here for a few hours, and, and uh, it was just too hot of a day. I'll, I'll get it done this week sometime. I still want to think of a nice base to do for that hammer. Um, secondly, I was on a uh, my poor man's flea market last week. I got yelled at again by my girlfriend for not taking this piece of furniture. She said, why didn't you touch such a beautiful thing? I already have one. But yeah, it was nice and it wasn't too far away. But carrying that thing home on your shoulders takes a toll on you, you know. And uh, I also uh, saw a nice bedroom. See if you, if you guys were looking for a bedroom set. Here was a nice bedroom set thrown out. Again, nice wooden things like that. And uh, But the best part was this. Look, this is for you younger guys. This Star Wars Land Cruiser or Land Rover, whatever they call that. How cool is that little thing, huh? I said, my buddy was a Star Wars geek. I, I showed it to him. He was freaking out. He wanted to go get it. You know, at two in the morning, he wanted to leave work and come get it. Just beautiful. But the thing is, it's right-hand drive, which I thought was unusual. I wonder if that was made overseas and brought here somehow, because I never seen a right-hand drive like that. Or maybe the original Star Wars thing was. I don't know. Anyway, thought that was pretty cool. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a uh, great rest of the week. We'll see you again on Friday. Take care now. Bye-bye. Try it out. Beautiful, huh?